Greetings, traveler. So yeah, we're just gonna go over, I'm just gonna look at the cards and if there's something that comes to mind, right, with either the new cards or in combination with some of the other cards that are coming back or just general advice or this or that, I'll just go over it, but I'm not going to, sorry, I'm not going to go over everything too much. So I think Mount the Raptor, right, is just a good card, sort of fits the Reborn type thing. Um, and Raven Idol was okay. The main mistake you see people make with Raven Idol is cast at turn one when they don't know whether they want to spell or a minion, so. That'll sort of be interesting to see that again. Uh, Dart Trap is uh, absolute garbage. <laughs> Hat is surprisingly fun. Uh, surprisingly fun, flexible card, pretty good. So that's um, that's something to look forward to. I think from what we've seen, um, Hunter is gonna really, 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 really need Candle Shot. So the new card that gives them weapons, right? That's another shot at Candle. Candle shot. Yeah, I think candle shot is gonna be so vital to try and make Hunter work in this meta. That's yeah, that's gonna be the decider, right? If you get candle shots, you can deal with all the reborn crap, otherwise you can't. Ooh, conjures come oh, oh you can oh, oh that's so dirty. Alright, for anyone who hasn't played with uh with Ethereal Conjure. That is a that is a, a monster of a card, right? Because it is a five mana six three, which is a relevant body, right? You need to deal with that, or it's either gonna trade well or smork you. And uh, discovering a spell is obviously great, right? Just getting getting a free spell on a relevant body, that's yeah, that's so good. So yeah, we might we might be able to do like the the slow slow shady mage, the super control shady mage. That'll be fun. Torch is okay, but this this guy is insane. Uh, Plunky, thank you for the full year. Welcome back, welcome back, Plunky. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> you can discover a spell on a three minute two three. I like well we like conjure more right, but yeah the three minute two three is not bad either. Uh, Keeper of Olaman, that was the card that sort of shaped the entire meta back in LOE. Now the meta will probably be slower than back what it was when this card came out, so it'll be a little bit different, but it's still a really good card, right? There's still gonna be so, there's still gonna be so many big boys out there. That's the thing, back when LOE came out, you actively avoided big boys because you would just get keepered and it would suck, right? Yeah, I get hit with a keepo, that's not so good. So I guess we'll see how the meta adjusts to that. Is Paladin gonna be popular? Is there gonna be tons of Keeper of Olaman? Are we gonna stay away from the big minions? That's hard to tell, right? We first have to see, we first have to look at the viability of Paladin. If it looks really strong, then this might be a giant problem. So we'll see if it's meta defining this time around. Excavated Evil, right? Whenever this is in, it's always like, oh, I can play around Nova. I can play around Excavated Evil. <laughs> that's always the... There's actually three just good cards for Priest, right? And Tomb is just solid removal. Yeah, Priest might actually be playable this meta. They're getting they're getting all their good LOE cards, right? Like, Priest just didn't whiff an LOE. Curator, Evil, and Entomb. They're all, they're all playable, so... That's going to be... Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Mm, okay, these are all pretty decent cards for Rogue as well. Pit Snake uh, is probably surprisingly playable because what you can do is uh, put a Reborn minion down, right, and proc it, and then put the Pit Snake down and say, like, you can't ping both, and then they have an Arcane Explosion. I'm like, ah, shucks, you could. But a lot of the time they're going to rely on just one ping at a time, and Pit Snake can be really... It can really screw with that plan they had because it's poisonous, so you sort of have to ping it. So then they might not be able to ping your reborn minion. And then this is a spider tank and two villages is good. So. <laughs> tunnel trog was super dominant and constructed. Never really a thing in arena like where you're like, oh, tunnel trog. Sometimes it popped off and you got memed. Everything of awesome with some of the Murloc support could actually be stupid, right? <laughs> oh, man. Mm. 
And rumbling is also just decent, so yeah. It's interesting as well for Shaman. Uh, Dark Peddler was the nuts. The other two are pretty bad. But Dark Peddler, oh man. Back when Power Overwhelming was a card. Woo! Just go like, play one Peddler, get a PO. Play another Peddler, get a Soul Fire. Bam, bam, smack, kill him. So yeah. Definitely a card to look out for. If you've never played with Peddler, good card. Very good card. Uh, <laughs> so there's some traumas about this uh, this guy's attack sound. If you... yeah, uh, Kaldorash, thank you. Thank you so much for the 100 bits. Click the disenchant button gently. Uh, I, don't, I don't think 100 bits will do for that Kaldorash. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe. I kind of like where it is. I, I like I like having the dust, and then I disenchant the ones that get nerfed to min-max it over the years, right? All right, so Curse Blades is pretty bad, but some some situations you might draft it, but most of the time you won't. Fierce Monkey, right? If you, if you want to do this to yourself, you can Google Fierce Monkey Candy Shop, and then that'll be, uh, that'll be engraved etched in your memory, and you'll be like, why did I do that? Uh, and then Obsidian Destroyer, we talked about earlier, is just a really, really solid card. And they printed a card that is neutral, that is very close to Obsidian, so yeah. And then the neutrals for LOE. Finley, right, was in the right class, like in Warrior, very, very decent. Um, Scarab in Paladin, right? Back when Muster and Coghammer were in at the same time, super nasty. Now, this is once again a card you have to do a little bit of math for. See where the good three cost cards are, see which class benefits the most. Because some classes are going to want Jeweled Scarab a lot more than other classes. It depends what you can pull from them. Back in the day, Paladin was the best with it because Muster, Coghammer. But now Muster and Coghammer won't be in the pool, so you won't be able to do that. All right, Brand Bronze Beard, right? Depends a bit on the bucket, but obviously this can pop off. Most of the time, this was just okay, though. Ancient Shades, one of the cards I did like to play with, but yeah, it could, could end up backfiring. Uh, Gorilla Bot, mm, some mech payout. Okay, okay. Gorilla Bot, in the right deck, not bad. Tomb Spider, also just surprisingly decent. Formana 3-3 Discover a Beast was just fine. So back when it got printed, people said it would be too slow, but surprisingly fine. This guy, he's too slow. <laughs> also, it's not it doesn't hand buff, so you need it to be on the board when something else is on the board, right? It can die on its own. So not good, pretty good. Uh, Genie is just fine, or Jin's is fine. Summoning Stone's a big meme sometimes. <laughs> I, I remember having some good times with this. Oh my god, okay. You guys all remember this guy. It's probably not gonna be able to make a deck for it, but who knows, right? Wobbling Runs in a slow enough meta is definitely playable. Very, very weak to Cabal Shadow Priest, Shadow Madness, right? All those things, so... Fairy Monk Ass against Priest, but other than that, it's okay. And then RT for Farm. That's a good value card. That's a good value card. All right, what was the next one? The next one was Angora, I believe, right? We can spam, he might have Reno again. Yeah, so every time we're about to kill someone, go like, please have a Reno. All right. All <clears throat> So yeah, I'm not going to go over everything, right? Otherwise, we're going to be here for hours and hours and hours, but just the relevant stuff. Uh, Turtle Forager, this guy, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it was Bucket 1 last time we saw him, and it was kind of hard to pick him Bucket 1. But we talked about how if the meta slows down, two drops that give you value are going to be pretty good because they're going to allow you to play something on two without the disadvantage of not having enough value. Excuse me. Um... Long neck was meh. Spores is meh. Shell shifter's okay. Some flexibility. Living mana, when played properly, is pretty uh, pretty scary. So the main problem that people play against living mana is they trade into it. So when people play living mana on turn five, just don't kill any of it, and then they can't play roar. They can't play power of the wild. 
if you kill one of them, they can play Power of the Wild. If you kill two of them, they can Roar, assuming they play it on five. The real nasty living manas are when they play it, and even without killing something, they can Roar. Right, so what turn is that? That's turn seven? Turn seven, and you only summon five of them, right? So you have two, you have two bodies on the board, then you play living mana. Then next turn you draw a card, you gain a mana. Yeah. So like, yeah, stuff like that. Or I guess maybe even maybe even turn six if you have. But then you don't really get that many, right? But yeah, anyways, like living mana, watch out for that card, right? You have to count how much mana they're going to have and you can really punish it. Tyrantus, oh man. Going to lose to people just jamming Tyrantus. Uh, Jeweled Macaw, super, super solid one drop. Razor Maw, super solid two drop. So that's pretty nice. Hunter lost this package and really missed it. But Macaw into Razor Maw is so nasty. Bite is okay, not crazy, but it's probably going to be pretty good with the reborn mechanic. The ability to ping. So yeah, probably going to pick this a bit higher. Uh, Stalker, reborn is not a death rattle though, right? No. So Stalker doesn't really work with reborn. Uh, Tolvir's whatever, depends on your one drops, obviously. A Dread is a memester, right? You don't want to play Dread in a meta where there's poisonous, so. <gasps> the best card in the game! <laughs> All right, well, Pyros is sort of a good example of the two drop that you can play without losing value. Pyros is sort of the archetypal two drop that really embodies that concept. Uh, Glyph is a good card, being able to bank the mana. It's very nice. Geyser's okay. Tempest is probably also okay with uh, the whole two drop thing. And then there's Meteor. Poof. Nasty Meteors. I'm gonna have a lot of golden cards coming in back. Yeah. Okay. All right. The Donger. Lost in the jungle. It's a really, really solid one mana play. Hydrologist, again, the two drop, right? It doesn't cost you value. This was over bucketed last time I saw it though. So we'll see if it's still there. Whew, man, this page, wow. This page, all right. Stegodon is surprisingly decent, right? Uh, in the right kind of deck, it's surprisingly decent. You have Vine Cleaver, Stegodon. This gives you so much value sort of out of nowhere, so. Uh, yeah, this page. Oh my god, this page, dude. Holy crap. So yeah, Stegodon is a bit of a sleeper. It's surprisingly decent in the right deck. Steed, I don't think I need to explain to anyone. It's great. Steed is just amazing, super solid. Tarim, um, is it still the best card in the game? They've printed a lot of bullshit since then, so it might not be the best card in the game. But Tarim, at least when it was in, was in my opinion the best card in the game. It's hard to describe how nasty Tarim was. And then you have to imagine that they can pull this out of Stonehill Defender from the day they printed Godfrey. Yeah, God, yeah Godfrey is just... But it's not as good as Rafat. <laughs> it's a bit of an insider for those of you who are there. All right, anyways. Um, just just keep in mind that you know this card is like probably top five of best cards ever and they can get it out of stone hill enjoy right enjoy so if you get if you get this in your draft pick it if you get this in your stone hill pick it right it's dumb it's so dumb it's so incredibly good when if you haven't played with it yet you might not see it straight away but Everything about this card is just dumb, right? The fact that this is a 3-7 means that after you turn your opponent's board into three threes, they have to sacrifice three of them if they don't have a ping. So annoying. So incredibly annoying. So, anyways. Vine Cleaver, one of the strongest late game weapons. Uh, once again, you might not see it straight away if you haven't played with it, but the two dudes every turn is so nasty. We've seen this with Piranha Launcher. This is why I have no doubt that the Hunter weapon that summons the 1-1 Locust with Rush is also just going to be good. All the weapons that spawn minions, they're just really good. It just gives you so much to work with. And then Dino Size is a great finisher. So in the right deck, this is a nice card at the end. So. Yeah, this page, man. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> oh man, okay. Ah, none of these cards are relevant. <laughs> Oracle's pretty good. Oracle's pretty good. If you're um <laughs> if you're if you enjoy playing uh, the Collins style priest, there was a time where Collins would pick Oracle over everything, right? Oracle over everything. Uh and it's a fine card. It's a fine card, it's a little little one drop that gives you value. Uh educated Oracle, yep. Curious Glimmer Roots, uh, like a card that is probably going to be really nice, right, if you're playing the slightly slower meta. Just any any type of body that is somewhat relevant that gives you extra value. Whew, so good. Uh, Mirage Caller, oh, with the reborn mechanic, wow. We might be doing some dirty priest things, man. We might be doing some dirty, dirty priest value things. Mirage Caller on the reborn mechanic, Whew. all right. And then we have Shell Razor, which is fine, right? That's an okay card. Uh, Lyra, it's a legendary, of course, but good card. And then Free from Amber, right? One of the most sort of defining Angoro Priest cards. Probably the most defining Angoro Priest card. Just, yeah, really a card you started to play around, like, oh, they can Free from Amber next turn. A lot of the time, what you try to do is uh, set up a board where you're like, okay, if he wants to Free from Amber now, he can't Nova or he can't Death. Right? So a lot of the time on turn eight, you would try to present them with threats that you normally wouldn't be comfortable with because like, oh, that's a really good death or that's a really good Nova. But then at least they couldn't play Amber. So this was definitely on your mind when you played against Priest. You just expect the Amber to come down because this is a card pretty highly picked. Hallucination, pretty decent arena card, not, uh, not to be underestimated. Any type of discover a lot of the time just gives you a high value card. Uh, the rest is kind of meh. I guess the um, the Lasher is going to be a bit better, right? Anything that can ping for one is going to be a bit better in this expansion with the Reborn. And Venom, slow value. Very, very good. A Mimic Pot's really meh. Uh, Shard is meh. Well, depends. If you're playing dual class, it's not so meh. <laughs> Sherizen, sort of meh. Foul Spine is absolutely insane so yeah oh man angoro made rogue so insane right rogue was good before but then angoro hit they got in venom they got valspine their removal just went so insane is there another page no right but still just these two cards alone right pew, 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 pew. all right shaman uh primal fin totem surprisingly good if you can have the right deck for it there was a time where I would pick this over anything when I was making Primal Fin Shaman work. Uh, anything, right? You put a Fire Elemental across from this? No. You put a Hex across from this? No. I just picked a Primal Fin. And it did well. It did well. Uh, Primal Fin with Primal Fin Synergy cards did really well. But maybe not this meta. We'll have to see. I'll definitely try. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hot Spring Guardian playable especially with the reborn Ooh, with the reborn mechanic with the reborn mechanic yeah okay so any anything that heals is going to be better because we have reborn so this is probably going to be valued higher than it was before that's that's nice good for you hot spring guardian spirit echo if we are going to make the very slow control shaman spirit echo is really good because control shaman lacks value most of the time control shaman has volcano which is really good it's one of those cards that kills everything right just deal just deal 15 just kill it all right <laughs> just kill it all so they're gonna have volcano they're gonna have earthquake a lot of the time you just have a lot of removal but you need raw value and uh spirit echo just gives you raw raw value three mana to essentially that's i mean it's probably still gonna be good because you just decide when you cast it but yeah Volcano will leave all the reborn stuff up though. I guess so. I guess so. But you have the new uh, you have the new shaman twilight flame color, so you can do volcano re flame color if you get that combo. And you have earthquake, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, Cal Calamos, if you get elementals, really good, really good. I I only started appreciating this card after I played constructed, and I was like, holy shit, Calamos is good. So I definitely kept an eye out for it. 
before in arena i was like eh, it requires eh, synergy right and you know how i like the unconditional cards but very 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 powerful mm. tunnelers okay teradex is good if you get uh enough tokens for it feeding time was sort of the implosion we all wanted right pay one mana more and always get a reasonable roll it's so much less tilting than having to roll and rolling the two or having your opponent roll a four so feeding time sort of a balanced implosion tarlurker if it's a slower meta right helps you draft really greedy there was a time where a lot of my Warlock decks really, really want the Tire Lurker. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> Explore on Goro. Yeah, this is a funny card. In the right Warrior deck, you can maybe pick it. But most of the time you want to stay away. Molten Blade is okay, right? If you have time, if you have time to hold it. And uh, hatchling, if you're a if it's a slower meta, is actually pretty sweet. You're you're okay with playing the slow game and landing the five the five the six nines. Um, there was a meta where I really liked Diorhorn. I think it was a meta where there was a really big lack of six drops. I think yeah, I think there was this there was this time. I don't know exactly which meta it was. Maybe it's like half a year ago already. But there was this there was this meta where there were just no six drops. And I was like, Dyron's okay. Uh anyways. Tarlord. It's a pretty big arena powerhouse. And then yeah, King Mosh, legendary, but it's good. Firefly and Glacial Shards are excellent one drops. Right? These guys are amazing. Uh Gastropod. Really fits that description of two drop that retains its value. Uh, yeah, this is the egg comparison I made earlier. Egg Napper is pretty good, right? Also gives you those 1-1 one, one tokens to deal with Reborn. Wasp is okay. It's better in decks that don't have to pressure. Oh yeah, no pirates, no pirates. Wait, no, K Oh, Dragon Slayer is in as well. Oh no! Not this shit again! Ah, oh, I don't want to review the next set or the one after that. I don't, can't remember which one it is. Oh, what an exceptionally poor design philosophy. Hey, pirate warrior is a thing. Let's print the pirate crap. Hey, we think we might dragon. We think dragon priest might be a thing. Let's print dragon slayer. You need something to deal with primordial. Not dragon slayer, dude. Nothing is worth a dragon slayer. Nothing is worth Dragon Slayer. Nothing better than having to draft a Hoarding Dragon, playing it and instantly losing because they happen to have a Dragon Slayer. It's an exceptionally poor design philosophy that, like, I like Hearthstone, right? I play a lot of Hearthstone. I think they do a lot of things really right, but they got that one so wrong. The Battle Cry Destroy is so toxic for the game, right? For arena, right? For constructed, fine. You can, you know, you can adjust your deck on the meta. But for arena, it's so incredibly bad. Pirate could lose you the game. It's a little less common, but Dragon Slayer is a really big one. We'll get to that at some point. Ooze is fine, especially if Paladin is going to be popular. This is really nasty to eat Vine Cleavers with. Oh, both Stonehill Defender and Tar Creeper are so meta defining. Hey, Marta, thank you for the 11 months. Welcome back. Almost a year. Thank you, Marta. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Uh, so moving on. But yeah, just know that these two are really relevant. Tar Creeper slows everything down. So Stonehill slows stuff down, but also this is the guy that's going to get them terror, right? It's 32 months in total. Well, I have to go off what's on this account, Marta, but I'm, I'm, glad, you're, I'm glad you're keeping track. So are you gonna remind us when we have the three year anniversary? So I can properly thank you. Flappy, I think Flappy is still banned, right? Like MC Tech. Flappy was really a victim of the masses. Flappy was fine. Just the masses hated on Flappy. 
So they banned Flappy because people complained. Feels Flappy, man. Because, yeah, this card... Like, okay, so the dangerous thing with banning Flappy is if you ban Flappy, there's so many other cards you need to... Like, you're, you're opening up a precedent, right? MC Tech, I think that is sort of the... We have a consensus, right, among... Or at least, you know, the vast, vast majority... Not looking at anyone. <laughs> Sun glitters. <laughs> right? The vast, vast majority of the arena streamers is in agreement that MC Tech is just completely terrible, right? Bad design, not good for the arena mode. You just do not want it. MC Tech is so bad. Uh, Flappy Bird is nowhere near that, right? So once you open up the, oh, we'll just ban Flappy Bird because people complain about it. Like, how is Dragon Slayer still in the pool then? It's in, like... It just shows that it's just about like, oh, there was just an outrage about Flappy. And I think Hafu sort of piled up on it. I think Hafu was really against Flappy at the time as well. And I get it, right? We all have our cards we hate. I hate Walking Fountain, right? We all have our cards we hate. But I think that Hafu being against Flappy at the time and then sort of everyone around it being like, yeah, let's ban Flappy. <sighs> I don't know, man. The thing is, with, with, with Flappy... You had to draft differently and you had to play differently. And a lot of the time, people would be like, I could play around Flappy, but it makes my play worse. So I'm just not going to play around Flappy. And then if I get punished, I can just be like, oh, Flappy's OP. Look at this card, right? Because I killed so many people with this card and I very rarely died to it. But if you're not going to draft enough three twos, if you're not going to coin one out or you know you're not gonna coin your three drop you're gonna try coin four drops and be be greedy about it and you get punished yes yeah, sir that's your it's your fault right anyways we'll move on i don't need to waste too much on this but yeah i just didn't like this i didn't like that they sort of just catered to people and be like oh we're just gonna ban flappy because people are complaining about it uh fire plume fire plume is so good and it's not gonna get worse with the reborn mechanic so yeah phoenix such a powerhouse very, very, very high on the pick list. If you haven't played with this card, it's been it's pretty recent, right? And Goro's pretty recent, but still, if you have, if you're if you're new to the arena, you haven't played with this, super solid card. It's why I'm so high on Arathi Weaponsmith. Arathi Weaponsmith is like Phoenix, but you get two charges at it. So Weaponsmith is so good in my book. Hydra. <laughs> Uh, Hydra is not as good as Fel Reaver, but it's going to be better than the Reborn guy, right? There's a good old Hydra plus Volcano. Yeah. Out of Barber didn't stay banned? Yeah, but that's they, they were from a different generation of bands. Out of Barber and Chugger were banned for pure balance reasons. Flappy was banned because people didn't like Flappy. And it's the same with MC Tech, right? But I think in MC Tech's case, it's far more unanimous and far more justified. So it's a different it's a different ban list. The MC Tech and Flappy are on the we don't like you ban list. Chugger Barber was the your class is too strong. We're gonna remove good cards ban list. So that's been adjusted since they do micro adjusts and uh, and bucket adjustments, right? Anyways, let's move on. Hydra is gonna have its new counters, so it's still gonna be a risky card to draft and only in the right. Like, a Hunter deck that curves out on Hydra and just goes aggro, mm, right? Nesting Rock, when this card got printed, I was like, why? Why? <laughs> look, look at this card, right? It's like, okay, so for 5 mana, I can, and I can expect to have a 5-5, five, five, a 4-6, or if the card is phenomenal, I'll get a 5-6. That was Pit Fighter, right? Pit Fighter without any text. So now they're like... Well, we're going to print a 4-7, which is just strictly better than 4-6s. And if you have two other minions, you get taunt. It's like, wow, I guess we're power creeping. So Angora was a really big power creep set. There was a lot of things that happened here. We're like, what? How is this? What? Tar Creeper is another like huge power power spike. Um, Calamos in the right deck, really good. Uh, in the wrong deck, not so good. So... If you get uh, fireflies and such to proc it, 
it's nice. Frozen Crusher, it's really meta dependent. People love Crusher, people hate Crusher. It's a very polarizing card. I've been on both sides of the fence based on how the meta has been, so. Depends what you can do with it. Depends how much healing you have. We never said Ritualist. It's probably going to be a lot more playable. Mm. Blaze Scholar, same as Servant of Kalimos. In the right deck, really, really good. So if you get the Elementals, keep an eye out for this guy. Threshadon is a little bit too fair in a meta where Worm is a thing. We're going we're gonna to hit Worm. I think the next or the one after next. Volcanoes are sort of the same deal. Like maybe if you're an aggressive deck, Stealth Wind Fury can get you the can get you to kill. Oh, all right, Charge Devil Sor. Never skip dig 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 dig. It's the first generation, but it hits a turn earlier, so I like it more. It's got minus two two, right? So seven seven instead of a nine nine, but it. Um, it just hits a turn earlier, which is big. When are you going to play Arena? Uh, tomorrow, probably. Today it's Talkstone. Uh, Primordial Drake. If the meta is fast, this card is so incredibly toxic. Now, I think the meta is going to be slow. And let me elaborate on that. If the meta is fast, it means that you're forced to draft a lot of early game. If you have to draft a lot of early game, the chance that your opponent gets a good Drake is really high. So this card, this card goes from batshit crazy to just overpowered. <laughs> it's funny, right? Because this card is so dumb. When you look, when you really, really pick this card apart, it's so incredibly dumb. It's silly how good this card is, right? So it goes from completely insane batshit crazy when the meta is fast to just overpowered. Uh, yeah, it comes out of Stonehill. You can, yeah, you can use it to finish off Reborn minions, so it's still going to be overpowered, right? It's still going to be really strong. This thing is always bucket one, I think top half as well. So, and you pick it. You don't always pick it, but you pick it a fair amount of the time. That's, that's, the, it's a scary thought, right? When this card is, I think it's top bucket one, and you pick it a fair amount of the time. That's when you know a card is busted. Primal is not really good, but in the right type of slow decks, can be pickable. Uh, I can see it working in Priests. You can discover Plague, you can discover Scream, you can discover Mass Hysteria. So that's three big AoEs you could hit. You could pick it in Mage, get Blizzard, get Flame Strike. Most of the time, stay away from it, but it's a reasonable uh, card in the right deck. The best card in the entire set! Let me see your Monkasaurus chat. Bring out your Monkasaurus for your boy. The king of the entire expansion. The highest possible achievable the highest possible achievable goal in this set is to have lethal with an Ultra Star. Are you gonna I, I don't wanna be too specific, Samsu, because a lot of it is just very big speculation because it depends on the micro adjust, it depends on the buckets. Blizzard can Blizzard can shape the meta the way how they want, right? If they micro adjust certain classes, if they adjust certain buckets, they can completely change the meta. So a lot of it is like, we don't know. We need to see what happens. We can make, we can say what's likely about to happen, but you know, for all we know, it's going to be different. All right. So Ungoro and this set, they have some big offenders, right? <clears throat> Start back again with Druid. So there's no UI, right? KFT is out? Yeah, KFT is out. All right, all right, all right. Spellstones. Oh, spellstones are back. Oh, man. Okay. All right, all right. That's going to add a whole new layer of things as well. All right. So I think out of this page, probably Branching Paths is the most relevant one. When this got released, I wasn't really sure at first. But... Um, Oh, right, this is why I didn't like the card when it was printed. I thought that you had to choose one of the options and then it would just go off twice. But you get all three options, you get to pick one and then all three options again and get to pick another one. It's just really, really solid. So gain 12 armor, gain plus two attack on the board, draw one card, gain six armor, draw one card, gain one attack on the board, right? So 
very, very flexible. This card was so dominant in Constructed as well. In combination with Spellstone, it would be silly because the armor gain would proc twice. So if you have two Spellstones in your hand and you would branch and path twice, you like gain armor, gain armor. Was that how it worked? I'm actually not sure anymore. I think that's how it worked. I played a lot of Druid and Constructed. I think that's how it worked. I think there were two separate triggers for the Spellstone. That was so dirty. All right. <clears throat> twig is a little slow. Uh, it's really funny when people ooze your twig, though, right? Ironwood Golem in the right deck, maybe, right? Just slow. Grizzled Guardian? There, there, there were metas where you would build your deck for Grizzled Guardian. You would draft Ironwood Golem, and then you play Grizzled Guardian, pull Iron Golem, and it was actually pretty fun. It was pretty fun to play. So we'll see. It's overall, K and C for Druid is, for Arena at least, not too crazy. All right. <clears throat> candle shot. Candle shot. Candle shot. So big. Uh, very, very big card. It's going to be so important with the Reborn mechanic. Cave Hydra is just a good minion, right? It's a really solid minion. Flanking Strike is really good. Really, really good. Dealing three damage, summoning a 3 3 wolf. Right? It's so fast. It's so good. Spellstone got nerfed up to six mana. It was five mana before. Most of the time, it's not really worth drafting for, but we'll see. I don't think it's going to be reliable enough. Crushing Walls. That is a big thing, right? Crushing Walls. We're going to have to play around it again. So... Shady, do you play around Explosive Shot or Crushing Walls? The answer is it depends from game to game, man. Like, how good are the how good are the walls? How good is the Explosive Shot? Which one is going to hurt you more? Uh, how much mana does he have, right? All these things, right, are so big. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer for that question. Which card do you play around? It's, it's on a turn-by-turn -turn base of how good is one card, how good is the other, Figure out which one is worse and play around that one. Most of the time, if they have seven mana, you play around walls. Not always, but most of the time. All right, Katrina's good, but depends on the deck, of course. If you have three high mains, then yeah, this thing is uh, insanely good. <sighs> All right, one moment, guys. I'm going to get something else to drink. A lot of water here. Talking, 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 talking. All right. This is fun though, right? We're really, really strolling past all the old sets. I don't do this too often, but it's it's good to refresh our memory and prepare, right? It's a lot of prep work we're doing right now for the new meta. All right, so one moment, please. In the right deck, can be really annoying. Runes and Mirror Entity are always those two opposites where you're like, this would be really good for runes. This would be really good for Entity. Raven, maybe, right? Depends a little bit on the deck. <laughs> deck of Wonders, oh man. I've actually made a deck with this where it was just good, but probably not gonna be for tryharding. Dragon's Fury, this is pretty tilting. Getting your board cleared because your opponent gets Dragon's Fury, Flame Strike, or Dragon's Fury, Blizzard. That's so annoying. Because you don't play around Dragon's Fury. Unless you're super far ahead and you have all the resources at your disposal. Dragon's Fury is so nasty. Uh, Leyline is good. Leyline's good. It's a Yeti, which has an elemental tag, which makes it better than Yeti. And then it has a relevant effect, so super solid card. Uh, unidentified Maul has an insane high roll, which gives your entire board Divine Shield. Such, such a nasty card when it hits that. A lot of the time Maul just rolls well, so you just need to just need to be good at the game and not get the taunt one. All the others are fine. Call to Arms got nerfed so hard, <laughs> right? It was like kind of okay in arena and then they made it five mana and then it stayed in the top bucket <laughs> so it was like oh so you're like five mana now and you're still in the top bucket yeah probably not so or maybe second bucket i don't know but it was way too high i remember 
I remember call to arms just being way too high for months, right? You just would never pick it. You just you just look at you'd look at it pass by and be like, <laughs> someone here picks call. To, right? Every time you saw someone pick call to arms, you'd be like, what did you skip for that, my man? All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Jailer with uh, Stegodon, right from Angora. It's pretty playable. And Potion of Heroism, depending on the deck, it's fine. Oof, all right. Crystal Lion, once again in the right deck. The, the Stegodon, Drygulch Jailer, Drygulch Jailer, uh, Vine Cleaver, Vine Cleaver Lion, super nasty combo. If you play Vine Cleaver on seven and they don't kill any of your dudes, the turn after you can play a two mana Lion. <laughs> Cause it goes two dudes, four mana Lion, four dudes, two mana Lion. So Lion plus uh, Vine Cleaver, super potent. Volunteer is a really, really strong card as well. Uh, a lot of the time you just need to go face when they play this because it just keeps coming back and keeps getting more value. <clears throat> Ooh, Duskbreaker is back. How much dra How many dragons have we seen right now? Primordial Drake? What are other relevant dragons for Dusk? So Twilight Acolyte and Duskbreaker are your dragon synergy cards. Oh no, Scorcher is in! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! This is gonna be such a dirty meta, man. I'm gonna do such dirty things this meta. Oh, chat, you're gonna be like, shady, shady. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be a dirty, dirty meta. All right. All right, cool. Uh, Elixir is funny, right? You look at it and you're like, oh, this is more of a tempo card, but it's surprisingly good for value because you can get the minion going back to the hand. You can get a copy. Copy? You can get a copy, right? I think so. So what you could do is you could you could play Elixir, which gives the minion a copy. No, it's a different one. There's a different combo I'm thinking of. I think you do Elixir, give the minion back to the hand, and then... You play Mirage Caller, copy the Elixir minion, and now your 1-1 one, one Mirage Caller minion comes back to the hand as the as the, the full version. That's sort of the nasty combo, and both Mirage Caller and Elixir are going to be in, so you're going to be able to do that again. So just, just keep that in the back of your mind when you're drafting. Mirage Caller and Elixir have some funny, have some funny uh, interactions. Twilight's Call... I've been on this sort of, but it's, that's really specific, right? If you have a bunch of oracles, you can maybe fit the Twilight's Call. Um, if you have a lot of worms, maybe as well, but it's pretty slow. You can only do it on turn nine. A lot of the time, Twilight's Call is just there to spend your mana until you get to the worms anyway. Uh, and yeah, then Dustbreaker, if you get enough dragons, it's just silly. I think now that Rastakhan, right, now that Rumble isn't, the focus sets right because if, if you don't know this the latest set always has an well always most of the time is an expansion bonus on it so that means you see more cards of the latest set which is why we see so many scribes dollar and crusaders we see so many piggies right they are more common because they get boosted right blizzard wants you to play with the new cards so last time we had scorcher and dustbreaker in the same meta scorcher was really common because scorcher was part of the rastakhan meta so now that Scorcher won't be as common, Duskbreaker might not be as good as a pick. Because back when Scorcher Duskbreaker were in the Rastakhan meta, Duskbreaker was a solid pick. Because you could you could be fairly certain you were going to get like two, three, maybe even four or five dragons. And then Duskbreaker was nutty. Didn't they get rid of the bonus? Ah, uh, I don't think so. If you see how many piggies, scribes, crusaders you get right now, I'd, I'd say it's very weird if there was no expansion bonus. Just to, just just put any just put any regular right card versus piggy or scribe. I don't know. I think there's still an expansion bonus. Whoo! Here he is, the king of the entire expansion. Ten fours. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't play this card. Right? Please don't. Right? It's uh, you used to have Bone Drake and Dragon's Roar. I think now we're only gonna have Dragon's Roar, right? Dragon's Roar gets you um, gets you Temporis, and then you play it because you have to, and then you lose. 
Uh, Psychic Scream, on the other hand, is such a phenomenal arena card. Like, it's so good, right? <laughs> but yeah, if, if you if you haven't really experienced Temporis, you might say, it's not that bad, right? I get the turns afterwards. It's really not that bad. And you're like, it's, it really is. Your opponent being able to go first a lot of the time just means you you die. Because taking two turns in a row, like time walk, is disgusting, right? You just build your board and then your opponent, you can't react, right? The opponent can't react. And then you just go face with the entire board or this or that. But I have won some matches off Temporis, right? I have won some matches that I wouldn't have been able to win otherwise. Mainly when my opponents did not go face and they didn't abuse it. <clears throat> Anyways. So yeah, but Psychic Scream is ridiculous. The main problem with Scream, and I talked about this earlier, is people don't look at this as a way to remove the board. They look at this as a way to make the opponent's deck worse. Crazy, right? But for a lot of people, the main priority of Scream is to make the deck worse. And it's just like, which shouldn't surprise me because Thel Reaver is a terrible card for most people, right? Well, maybe not most people, but still a fair chunk of people hate Fel Reaver. And it's because it mills the deck, right? So there's way too much emphasis on, oh, I'm going to make the deck worse, or I don't want to mill the deck, or this or that. The deck doesn't matter until you're out of cards, until you hit fatigue. So a lot of the times, the things you shuffle into your opponent's deck don't matter nearly as much as the things you've removed, right? Which is the same thing, but removing them off the board is much more important than, you know, whether you shuffle a good card in this deck, yes or no. So it's super important that you treat this as seven mana, kill everything. Don't think about, oh, I'm shuffling it back into the deck, just seven mana, kill everything. It's really good. Now, some matches, some really, really slow matches, they get the cards back and it's a bit annoying, but most matches, it's seven mana, kill everything, right? Just really good card. All right. <clears throat> oh, my girl Sonya is back. Ever since I played Quest Stroke, I love Sonya. I love to meme around with it. Oh, I love to meme around with Sonya. It's such a fun card. We'll see in what bucket she is, she's in. But last time, it only cost me a little bit to pick her, right? I was like, ah, technically Sonya isn't the right pick, but I like her too much not to pick her. Uh, Minstrel is good. Minstrel is definitely good. Shiny Finder, depending on the deck, is playable, but not so good. Kingsbane with Poison. Ah, Kingsbane is whatever, honestly. Light's Justice isn't nearly as good in Rogue as it is in Paladin, right? Feldori Strider is a really good card, but a lot of the times it's just so highly bucketed that you can't pick it. It's not terrible to pick it, but so often it's like Feldori, Sap, Falspine. And then you're like, I can't really pick that, right? So, yeah, it's a really fun, strong card. Because the shuffling the ambushes is technically not so good. But it comes in a form and a 4-4, which is acceptable. And then the effect is relevant. So, But there's also Beneath the Grounds. It's, it's just compare those two, right? Beneath the Grounds is 3 mana, spell, no board whatsoever. For 1 extra mana... You get a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you can see that they had an idea with Beneath the Grounds and they're like, oh, wow, this is so trash. What have we printed? Because <laughs> then the next iteration is Feldore Strider, which is like, oh, for one mana, we're just going to slap a 4-4 four, four on top. Right? <clears throat> Anyways, so on to the next one. Uh, Spellstone is okay, depending on how much removal you have access to, depending on how much removal you got in the draft, it's okay. Yes, I know Deadly Shot costs three mana, but we're Rogue. Rogue, if Rogue had Deadly Shot, it would be busted because Rogue has a dagger. Rogue can kill one ones very easily. Rogue has fan of knives. Rogue has a Psy. Rogue has everything, right? So <laughs> Rogue just has everything. So three mana Deadly Shot in Rogue would be absolutely insane. Spellstone is playable, right? You'll take it. Uh, all right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be trying out Slow Shaman. Unstable Evolution is one of the most fun arena cards ever printed, and it's really good as well on top. So it's really fun and really good. It's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's hard to describe how good this card is. 
you do need to plan for it a little bit and you do need to be quick on your feet when you're playing it but most of the time it's not really a problem it's a very difficult card to co-op usually you just say okay whoever has the wheel decides what you do because so much of it is okay what do you roll what do you roll where do you evolve so there's so much room with this card to improve in the turn that a lot of the time the time is relevant or a lot of the cases the turn timer is relevant keep close to the mic yeah, yeah, yeah i got i got him over here i got him over here so you uh you really want to start at the start of your turn and you don't want to waste 40 seconds all right crushing hand is fine we'll have to see with the new reborn stuff whether it's still fine the one thing that I fear for Shaman is that just the lack of an innate ping, right? No ping on the hero power is going to it's going to make them too awkward to deal with all the reborn stuff, but we'll see. We're definitely going to get we're we're going to give everything a go at some point. See if there's no hidden gems we're missing over. We're skipping over. Err Grumble is just good. It's just good. 6 mana 7/7 seven, seven with upside. It's just good. Um the Shaman Spellstone in really slow metas are kind of okay. Most of the time they're just bad. But in really slow metas they're okay. Depends what you, how much overload you have. Rune Spear as well in really slow metas is kind of okay actually. Because on average this is quite a bit of value. Mm, ooh, alright. Kobold Librarian was... Oh man, Kobolds and Catacombs for Warlock was so sick. Oh man, just look at this page, right? Cobalt Librarian is insanely good. Vulgar Homunculus is pretty darn good. Hooked Reaver is okay. Spellstone is really good. It's just, yeah, so good. All right, um, there's gonna be easier ways to self damage now as well with the uh, the three drop for Warlock that they're getting. So, the, the was it a four or five? I think it was a four or five, right? The three mana four or five, deal three damage every time you attack. All right. Void Lord is uh, just nutty and Rin in the right deck, maybe, right? A lot of the time people kill themselves with the seal. Uh, you shouldn't play the seal if you can't afford it. And a lot of the time you can't afford it because you have to ask yourself, can I justify playing a five mana two, two on this board? A lot of the time the answer is no, you cannot. So you need to be careful with when you start sealing. Uh, armorer in the right deck maybe but most of the time just kind of eh cobalt barbarian is also pretty eh gem studded golem is good six mana five nine the downside is bad but still it's a wall right it's a five nine wall uh an identified shield that was okay actually right wasn't insane but it was okay you could get a Reaper out of it. You could deal 5 damage with it. Uh, you could get 15 armor, which in some decks was actually pretty okay. And the other one was summon a 5 drop? No, a 5-5. Five, 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 which 5 drop, basically, right? Okay, so yeah, this this was okay. Spellstone. Ugh. Ugh. Spellstone. So nasty. In the right deck, right? This was so dumb. I remember the dual class meta. If you get Rogue Warrior, whoa. <laughs> or I guess Warrior Rogue, right? Because the first one was the, the the portrait, the second one was the hero power. So you get Warrior Rogue, and that's nasty. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, Spellstone. Uh, we'll have to see what kind of a meta it is. Because usually with Warrior, if you could draft slower warrior, you could just go regular taunt warrior or you could go spellstone warrior. And a lot of the time you'd keep the spellstone in your opening hand. Woke cleaver is pretty, pretty pog as well. This card's pretty good on average. Uh, all right, dire moles just good. <laughs> Jibber is surprisingly playable, but we'll have to see. Maybe not in this meta because there's going to be just the taunts in the way like Tar Creeper and Lone Champ. But Jibber... And the right meta is actually surprisingly playable. Is there any juicy Scorp target right now? I don't know, actually. I'm sure chat will remind me. Oh, I... <sighs> this card is disgusting. It's so bad for the game. 
It's so bad for the game, man. Every time you play a dragon, you're like, well, if they have it, I might just lose the game. Cool. So, so bad for the game. Oh, Scorpion works with the debuff. That is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that debuffs the attack and then you can Scorp it. It's true. Yeah, it's, yeah, I hate Dragon Slayer. That's one of, like, I'm, I'm still pretty hyped for the expansion. It's still going to be fun, but that's, that's probably the main thing that detracts from the fun. It's Dragon Slayer being a card. Like, yeah, honestly, if I could use my influence for anything, it'd just be like, Blizzard, please don't have this card in Arena. It's so annoying. Because I don't think it adds anything cool to the, uh, like, the upside is just not there. Like, when you hit on a dragon, sure, some people might be like, oh, yeah, that's a good feeling. But I think most of them are like, well, I guess I was really skilled this turn and I used my Dragon Slayer on a dragon. Yay. All right, anyways. <clears throat> moving on, moving on. Fungal Enchanter is decent, right? Not like a powerhouse, but decent. Lone Champion is one of the uh, one of the best three drops when you're when you're playing defensively, because you don't have a board on two a lot of the time. You're not gonna draft many twos, and you're jammed alone. So, mm. I don't think Dragon Slayer will matter that much. Rastakhan is in, and you will pick Scorcher. So, you're not gonna not pick Scorcher because of Slayer. That's the worst part. You have to pick Scorcher. It's too good. So then you go like, well, I played my Scorcher. Let's see if I lose the game. Oh, I lost the game. Cool. So anyways, moving on. Cobalt Apprentice against Reborn. My boy. Yeah, I actually didn't hate this card. I actually didn't hate this card. All right. Shroom in the right deck was okay, but not crazy. Basilisk is a powerhouse so good it's hard to express how like we saw this card being released and we we're like oh man this is gonna be good and then we played with it oh it's even better <laughs> it's so disgusting how good this card is oh, toothy chest oh god i had so many bad toothy chest experiences where you just had to pick it because of the bucket system and you're like oh, i guess it's toothy chest Oh, shit. Reborn, Void Ripper? No, no, no. Minus two attack to all your opponent's minions and then <laughs> kill them. You give, you give, like, let's say your opponent has at least, you know, let's say two minions with two power. You turn them into zero power. Then you flip them. They die because they have zero health. It's so stupid. <laughs> Oh my god. That's gonna that's actually gonna be a consideration, right? You're gonna have to ask yourself, do I want to develop multiple two power minions? Because it's just they just die, right? Damn. That's so nasty. Actually gonna be a consideration, right? How many two power minions do I want? <laughs> oh, Alright. Uh, Curse Disciple, right? Sort of, sort of like the Reborn cards, which is good. Five mana, five one times two. Like rogues could stab it, but five damage is a lot, right? Sometimes you took fifteen off one disciple. That's like, yep, half my health is gone, but I sure showed him. Right? Um, yeah, this is like the prime um, Dragon Slayer targets. Without Dragon Slayer in the meta. This is actually kind of okay. The problem is they're both in the same set, so you can, you can almost never draft Hoarding Dragon and be, you know, comfortable. You're always going to be like, well, let's see if he has it. Uh, Cobalt Monk was just good, right? 3-6, just Water Elemental, no freeze, still good. Shroom Brewer, one of the best voice lines in the entire game. Also pretty good, but mainly for the voice line. You should definitely try drafting these if you haven't. Oh, you're back as well. Mushroom power. Oh, wow. Cube as well. Mushroom power. 
I really wonder how it's all going to interact with each other. Now that I see Fungomancer being a card again, I'm like, are people going to be able to draft slow? If you're not challenging the board and the other guy goes, <laughs> what do you do, right? What do you do? It's going to be a lot of testing, but we might not be able to do that like hyper reactive style. All right. Glue meter, surprisingly good, right? It's, I mean, you look at the card and it's okay. I'll put it this way. There's another five mana poison guy, which is a five, two without taunt. And it's just hard to describe how much better this is when it has taunt. There's so many awkward glue meter boards where you're like, oh, I can't believe I can't just go face here. Uh, Guild Recruiter in the right decks is actually pretty good. If you uh, if it's going to be a meta where you don't pick two drops, Guild Recruiter is super decent because you can pull out uh, spider tanks or water rallies or stuff. So pretty good. Uh, oh, Worm. Worm is the king of the late game. This card is so good. If the meta is just a teensy bit slower, Violet Worm is such a powerhouse. All you need to do is be able to... It's sort of like Scribe in a way where if you can survive and just play a Scribe and you're fine, that's such an advantage for you. Same thing if you're uh, playing a slightly slower meta. It just moves up to... Uh, <clears throat> it just moves up to mana. Be like, oh, I mean, if I can drop a worm and I'm fine. Spiteful though, bah, it's whatever. It's pretty trash in the arena. Some people make it work. Most of the time, it's just bad. Uh, Sleepy Dragon. Most of the time, a four six after your opponent plays this three mana card, but still, <laughs> uh, pretty good, pretty good. O card is just good, but it's legendary. Uh, yeah, Sleepy Dragon is super playable. And then there's Rumble, and then then we're two, right? Just Rumble. But it's fun. Uh, to each their own. To each his own, I guess. All right, Rumble. This is a bit more of a recent release. So we've... Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you still remember the Scorcher Warbear meta. Those cards are still going to be good. All right. Uh, Savage Striker is pretty good. Uh, it's a lot of the time it's a Fire Plume Phoenix on turn four with two three stats instead of three three stats. But you have the flexibility of dealing one damage twice, so you can kill a Scarlet Crusader, which you can't do with Fire Plume. And you and with Reborn, ooh, with Reborn, mm, with Reborn. <laughs> so yeah, this is probably going to be pretty good for Reborn uh, meta. Just a really, really solid two drop. Pounce is okay, right? Pounce is okay, but Savage Striker, very nice. Loa was usually also fine, but it was so highly bucketed. It was usually the pick if you were gonna be a bit more of an aggressive druid. I think I'm actually gonna, I think I'm actually gonna be prepared this time, guys. A lot of the time, you know, I'm just like, ah, I just roll into the meta, but I think now I'm gonna have sort of a list of things I want to try and some speculation. So we're gonna we're gonna try and have a really good start this time around. And see like okay. And I'm gonna try to not play the meta too much and more just be like okay, what's just gonna be strong? Because I think this is a mistake I make all the time. I'm gonna be like, oh people are gonna do this, people are gonna do that. And the, the answer is people are gonna do whatever. <laughs> it's really hard to have a meta at the start because people are going to be like, oh, let's see what this does. Let's see what this does. So most of the time is just look at what's going to be strong most of the time and then just do that rather than try to snipe the meta. You can do that more the, the last weeks of the meta. It's going to be much more defined. People sort of know what works. Like now, right, we, we have, you can see like, I'm, I'm like, okay, we're going to play against Mage. People are going to play Portal on seven, this and that. We're playing around that. But at the start, people are gonna do whatever. So you have to, you have to just go for raw power at the start. So yeah. Anyways, Direhorn was good, but not as good as anticipated. <clears throat> but it was good. It's obviously good, right? You look at this card. That's good. But I thought it was gonna be better. But it's it's a solid card. It's a seven seven, and when it kills something uh, that doesn't have seven health, you get a five five. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, ooh, so they're gonna, oh, wow, okay, okay. Ooh, this is actually good news for Hunter. They're gonna have Candle Shot and Spring Paw to deal with the Reborn guys, and then just have a Headhunter's Hatchet as well. Might be enough, probably not, but might be enough. We'll see, we'll see. Spring Paw plus Candle Shot is really nice to have. That's a really solid package. All right. And Jebated Arrow. Look who's back, boys. Jebated Arrow. There's gonna be lots of... Ooh, yeah, there's gonna be lots of Reborn guys on one health, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, we will definitely try to make Hunter work as well. We already have some ideas, right? Like the Slow Shaman and now the Hunter with all the pings. I think a lot of the time it's just gonna be something similar to what we're doing now, just in a different form. So we have to figure out what's going to be the scribe, what's going to be the dollar on crusader, and how exactly do we want our curve. Oh, sorry about that. I think we can already see like the, the violet worm will be the scribe. And then we need to see how much more do we want to move up the curve. Because <clears throat> right now you're fine with not having any A-drops. That's probably not going to be the case in the next... Uh, in the next meta. Sightless Ranger. Oh man, Sightless Ranger. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright, next next one. I've never been a really big fan of Fire Eater, but I might just have been the specific set in the meta. I think there were yeah, I think there were just lots and lots of good three mana cards because of Pyromaniac and was there another one? Uh there's maybe another specific mage three drop that was around at that time. I'm uh, I'm just checking up on chat a little bit here. Will Murps Hunter work? Yeah, for Murps. <laughs> we'll see. All right, uh, moving on, right? So Pyromaniac is just a really good card. That's another... Uh, oh, yeah, Pixie, right? Pixie was pretty... But there was another one. There was another one. There was a Mage-specific 3-drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frozen. Frozen Wraith or Cold Wraith. Cold Wraith. Cold Wraith was a specific one, but that's, uh, that's KFT. It's not going to be in. Anyways, uh, so Pyromaniac, just really good, right? Spider tank with upside, really, really solid. Blast wave, blast wave, very, very, very nasty. This thing versus Violet Worm, and they're both in the same meta again. Sometimes when you were playing slow control priest, you were like, do I even want to play my worm against this mage? Because if he kills my worm and then blastways me, I'm just dead. <laughs> Thoughts on Spirit Hawk? What's a Spirit Hawk? Spirit of the Dragon Hawk? This thing? It's whatever, honestly. Uh, Janelai is also just whatever. It takes so long. Hexlord is sometimes okay if you really, really need the big value. All right. Uh, Blood Claw was usually a bit of a meme, but I've had decks where it actually worked, so I think it's pretty just deck dependent and see what else you have. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a legendary with spider tanks, is good. Hmm. Battle Axe, probably gonna be pretty good with all the reborn stuff, right? We're gonna have lots of things on one health, and Battle Axe does not mind killing one health things. New Challenger was okay, but was a tad over bucketed. Well, last time I saw it, so I didn't really like it. Mm, Phantasm is good. This is also a Fire Plume Phoenix, right? And being able to ping. It's just a 3-2 instead of a 2-3, like with the Pounce. So, pretty nice. Uh, mass Hysteria. So we're going to have Hysteria. We're going to have Holy Nova. We're going to have the Ripple, blah, blah, blah. We're going to have Psychic Scream. We're going to have Plague. There's going to be so much AoE coming out for Priest. We're going to have Duskbringer. So, was it Duskbringer? I think it's called Duskbringer, right? So, yeah, so there's, there's so much AoE for Priest, right? So much AoE. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We've already covered that, maybe, and it's not a big deal for me. Because a lot of the time, the priest has misplayed at that time. Because he could have probably cast a much better scream and just shuffle the worm away. Most of the time, they wait until the worm dies. They let the worm wreck havoc. And then they're like, haha, shuffled your one ones away. So it's not the right way to use a worm. All right. <clears throat> 
Ooh, walk the plank is back. All right. Walk the plank. The rest is kind of meh. Uh, stolen steel sometimes. I wasn't a big fan of it, but I know a lot of people that really like this card. But yeah, walk the plank is really nice. Hype Mon's okay, but I, you know, I, I rarely had runs where I really loved it. But we'll have to see which new cards are in and whether some of them make a difference. Tooth for Reborn minions? You have a dagger, right? Or you mean like Rush your Reborn? Eh. I don't know. Stolen Steel into Twig. Yeah, yeah, you could also not hit Twig. I was like, wait, I didn't plan for this. What the hell? Big Bad Voodoo was good. Yeah, Big Bad Voodoo was good. Box Slosher was a little eh last time, so we'll see. Might give it another go, but it was a little eh. Mm -hmm. Reign of Toads was good. Yeah. Definitely a good card. <laughs> Shriek might be a little bit better with the Reborn stuff, but I didn't love this card last time I played it. Demon Bolt. Ooh, Demon Bolt was good. Oh, man. So now they're going to have Demon Bolt and the big boy demon that kills... Things at the expense of health. Yeah. Warlock might be something to look out for. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Ooh, Warrior. So Collider is out and so is Warpath. That's probably going to make Dragon Roar a lot weaker, but still a good card. Dragon Roar is still a good card. And it did get some town stuff, right? Maybe Warrior is playable. We'll see. I mean, we made Warrior work right? in this in this expansion. Might not have been insane, but we made it work, right? How much did we end up averaging with Warrior in the end? 7.33 average over 15 runs. Absolutely not my worst uh, average. But Warrior had an advantage, right? Chat never drafted my Warriors, so... <laughs> Warrior had an advantage there. <laughs> All right. All right, sorry, chat. <laughs> Alright, so let's go. Mm. Smolder Thorn could be really annoying. It was it was sort of this card that it didn't go off that often, but when it did, it was really, really annoying. Mm. Okay. The Drake is a little meh, but it's okay, right? It's not a huge downside other than Dragon Slayer. Ugh. See, right? Like, I'm just, I'm considering not drafting a 5 and a 5-5 five five because of Dragon Slayer. It's so dumb, right? It's so dumb. Uh, Soul Thrace. Yeah, buddy. Soul Thrace is really nice. And, oh my god. Oh, the new Ogre, right? The new Ogre. Where is he? Let me show him for anyone who hasn't seen him. He's over here. Whenever your hero attacks, gain 5 armor. So you equip Soul Thrace. The next turn you play Goon, or vice versa. And then you play the Armored Goon. Whenever your hero attacks, gain 5 armor. So if you can kill 4 things, you gain 20 health that turn. So that's like 20 free health to spend on attacking minions. <clears throat> that's, oh my god, that's disgusting. That's so nice. And now we've come to the neutrals of the last set, so... We've nearly come to the end of our extensive card review here. Expansion preparation. Uh, Taskmaster was okay uh, in the meta, so we'll have to see how it feels. Might not be okay right now. Mm. Ankle Biter was just good, right? It's comparable to the guy that summons a rush minion. But I think the guy that summons a rush minion is better because you can tempo him. Ankle Biter has the advantage that it can get past Taunt. But I think the advantage that you can tempo a 2-drop is still better. So Because a lot of the time they're going to do the same thing. So I think the advantage of being able to be tempoed is better than the advantage of being able to bypass Taunt. Uh, Witch Doctor is pretty silly in a Dragon deck. So if you get the Dragons, the Witch Doctor is really silly. Uh, Scarab Egg is okay, right? It's the same, like, all eggs are kind of the same, right? It's like, if you have X energy, they're good, right? Pretty simple. 
Shark fin fan is a nuts and rogues. Super, it's just silly, right? Mm, shield breaker might be okay depending on uh, the amount of taunts we have, but most of the time this was a bit meh. Trickster is usually fine because it's a spider tank. Tortoise was pretty good last time around as well. So usually I didn't mind the downside. The nuts forgot about hench clan thug already. Wait, did I skip over thug or not? Or is or is Thug from an earlier expansion? I don't think I saw Thug, right? No, Thug, Thug shouldn't be in. Oh, that's Witchwood. Thug is Witchwood, right? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Beastmaster. Nasty. Nasty. Fnatic, yeah. <laughs> Fnatic, Ellie Giggle. So, Fnatic was great for me, right? I loved Fnatic, right? Every time my opponent played it, I just won the game. Like, this was one of the best cards for me in the entire set, right? It was just, I loved seeing this come out. I must have had an insane win rate post Fnatic on the opponent's side of the board. Because you just had people that kept trying to make this work, and it was just, you just always just cleaned out, right? It, it was almost never worth spending four mana on a 2 3 to buff your hand plus one plus one. So, we'll have to see why. It, that was previous rotation, right? We'll see this rotation. I'm assuming it's still gonna be bad. I'm assuming it's still going to be bad, but we'll see. Grifta. Now, that was just a good card. You might say, well, you give him a card as well, right? But a lot of the time, you could pick cards where either option would be good for you, but not for your opponent. So you could have, say, um, usually you play Grifta when you're ahead on board, right? So then you could pick a card like for instance bloodlust right i'm, I'm not <clears throat> i'm not specific like i don't think you can can you pick bloodlust here i don't think so right only if you're a shaman whatever it doesn't matter right just it's an example if you have a lead on the board and you pick bloodlust if you get that it's insane because you're ahead on the board if your opponent gets it it's trash because he doesn't have a board usually you were able to pick cards where it's either really good for you or neutral so that your opponent didn't get a really good card and if you were in a really bad spot, you could pick sort of the Hail Mary pick, right? And say like, well, I was going to lose this anyway, but maybe Grifta gives me exactly the one I need. So that's that's why Grifta is a good card. It requires a little bit of strategy behind it, but you can usually engineer a choice where whatever I get, it's okay. Whatever my opponent gets, it's okay. So, And then there was a chance for high roll, right? You just pick cards that are good in your situation. Scavenger, surprisingly okay, and with the Reborn stuff, it's probably not going to get any worse. The three armor, especially in something like a Rogue or a Warlock, is super useful. And the fact that it comes down with stealth makes it hard for the opponent to deal with it. So usually this got you, you know, six armor and three damage to something twice. It's just fine. Thug, also just a decent card, right? Just something you can get a lot of value out shaker was fine not crazy but fine basically just sort of reborn right but comes back with two health instead of one scalper um very very hyped but in the end didn't do that much very annoying when it comes down and you couldn't deal with it but it was rare that you couldn't deal with it because uh this was also a meta where there was a lot of rush right we, we had we're, we're about to see a card here right uh sightless ranger was a card. Um, anyways, we'll, we'll stay in order. Scorcher. Woo! That was a card. This is this is likely going to just get even better. Right? Battlecry, deal one damage to all other minions. In a meta where Reborn is going to be uh, central. So that's just going to be good. Being able to deal one damage. Uh, former champ is just good as well. A 1-1 one, one that summons a 5-5. Five, five. You can play around Mirror Entity. You can use uh, Unstable Evolution on this thing. It's just... Mm. <laughs> uh, announcer is really good when you're on offense and okay if you're on defense. Lots of crazy cards. Hey, Collins. I didn't know you still frequented Hearthstone streams. What's up, man? Uh, thank you for the 28. Are you ready? You're ready to make your grand return to the arena? The people are impatiently awaiting it. Uh, yeah, so the, the Moshog announcer, if you play it on defense, 
it's kind of meh because people don't have to attack it. But if you are, um, if you're the aggressor and you're pushing face, your opponent might have to trade into this and he might fail. That's a huge deal. So very, very good if you're the one going face. Okay if you're trading, right? Because it's still, you know, it's it kind of protects itself from faceless rager, uh, steel rager, or any other minion that's on the board. So, but yeah, just very, very good card if you're on offense. Like almost deceptively good, right? You might not notice it, but it's so good. Sightless Ranger, as previously mentioned, probably going to be really good with all the Reborn stuff. Lots of One Health stuff lying around. Um, so not only does it have initiative killing the One Health things, it then makes two more one ones, which can also kill One Health things. So Sightless Ranger probably going to be very high on the pick list as well. Uh, Snapjaw, very fun card. Lots of cool interactions with it, but you need to know what you're doing. So many times I saw people play this and just ruin their boards. <laughs> but this has really cool interactions. Um, I think the Stegotron is out, right? But just to give you an example, you can have a one health shell fighter on the board and then play a damaged Stegotron. Damaged Stegotron deals six damage to itself. The shell fighter will absorb that, but it only has one health, so it's pretty good value. And then you have a 512 all of a sudden. So there's lots of cool little interactions you can do with the shell fighter. But you need to really think it through, have a little bit of experience, because it's it's very easy to ruin your board and actually get a worse outcome when you play the Shell Fighter. Um, okay, Warbear is very good. It's just super solid. Initiative, Taunts, just good, right? Just good card. Very, very good card. Crowd Roaster, pretty tilting card when it comes out of uh, Dragon Roar because it's accompanied by an activator already. Mm. Mm. Linecracker's okay. Linecracker's okay. We'll see. It, it depends a bit on you know how slow the meta's going to be, but I was okay with this card. Uh, my boy, Moshog. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, right? But we can do some crazy. Ah, oh, guys, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm so ready, right? We're gonna we're gonna try out so many crazy things. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some strategies at the ready, right? We're gonna have some strategies at the ready. But this was really fun, right? Because when this came out, everybody was shitting on Moshog Enforcer, right? Everybody's like, oh, this card is so bad. You're just gonna get cabaled and blah 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 blah. Uh, like that was everyone's reaction. Like, oh, but you can't play it against priests, but. It won me so many games, right? Because it just allowed you to draft such a stupidly greedy deck because you could just put a minimum of 15 health worth of taunt down. And there were so many decks that I, I went like really high wins with where I had two enforcers and people were like, wait, this, this card is playable? What? <laughs> what? And yeah, it's just, yeah. The, the, there were so many cases where people would just have to attack this with a violet worm, <laughs> like to break the shield. And I was just, yeah. Stupidly greedy, Pepega. Yeah, yeah, just stupid greed, right? Those those five violet worm kind of decks. Yeah, the release is Tuesday. It's currently Thursday. So we're going to have the weekend. That